So, some of you may have noticed that I haven't produced any videos in quite some time. The last video I made was a live stream debate between Aaron Yilmaz and Fazel Rana on the topic of human evolution. If you follow the Facebook page and or my personal Facebook account, you will know why I have been MIA for the past several months and haven't produced any content whatsoever, be it in a blog post, podcast, or video form. But for those of you who are used to getting at least a couple of new videos every month, uh, you may or may not have noticed that I've been silent. I haven't even responded to any new comments that have been posted in the comment sections of my videos or blog posts. Posts. Don't worry, I will get to them, but I felt like it would be best to put this video up before resuming any of my duties as a web-based Christian apologist. On the Cerebral Faith Facebook page, back on February 11th, I posted this status. Quote, it might be a while before you see any new content out of me. A lot of things are happening right now. I recently spoke on my personal page about having both ministry burnout as well as social media burnout. The former, because I just ran myself into the ground. I overworked myself. Part of that is my own fault. I think I went harder than ever before making content as a way to cope with my mother's death. I've been a workaholic for a while anyway, taking on too many projects, blog posts, podcast episodes, videos, arguing with people in the comment sections of the blog and videos, being a guest on other people's podcasts, studying, etc., 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 but it just went into overdrive when my mom died. I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but I was throwing myself into my work to avoid thinking about her, because if I didn't think about her, I wouldn't be sad. To overcome ministry burnout, I just need to take a break. It might be a long one. Could be Easter before you see another article or another video. I also need to remind myself of why I do what I do. Cerebral Faith will be 10 years old this August. I started it when I was 20 because I wanted to win unbelievers to Jesus and equip fellow Christians with the answers they need to be more effective witnesses to a skeptical world. I started Cerebral Faith as a ministry of the intellect, employing the best natural theology, biblical studies, etc. to show people that Christianity is true and is rational to believe. I didn't start this for clout, to gain fans, or be famous, or to make money. I would be producing totally different content if I wanted money and popularity. Perhaps I'd be a PokeTuber like MNJTV, or make reaction videos like Sniper Wolf or Reaction Time. I have to remind myself that it doesn't matter if I only have 300-something subscribers. It doesn't matter if I only have 10 patrons. I am a content creator in the sense that I make content, but I have to think of myself as a minister. I'm also sick of social media. People are toxic to each other all the time everywhere. People are just at each other's throats all the time over every little thing. Even if I'm just lurking, i.e. just post looking at posts and comments, I'm still affected emotionally. To quote the Green Mile, I'm tired, boss. Tired of people being ugly to each other. And to top it all off, today I had a big life event that was pretty much an upheaval. I had to cut ties with a family member who I couldn't be more furious with. I won't say any more than that, but I am an emotional train wreck right now. Uh, I'm, I'm just an emotional wreck right now, and I just need some time away. If you would pray for me, I would appreciate it. I will not shut down cerebral faith. Do not worry, I won't become a Twitch streamer or delete my Facebook account, although if I could, I would. I just need a break. There isn't a single area of my life that isn't falling apart, and I just need to do this for a while. To those who are subscribed to my Patreon, I will understand if you delete your pledges until I come back. I feel guilty for not putting content out for not putting out content when you guys are donating every month. I feel like you guys are paying, and if I don't put out content at least once a week, I feel like I'm robbing you. So if you want to save your money, I totally get it. You can always repledge when I come back. It's up to you. End quote. I went on to write that there would be more content in the future, and that this wasn't a farewell, but a vow to meet again. So now that I'm on the other side of this, I'm ready to make more videos. That should be obvious from the fact that you're watching this right now. My problem was exactly what I said it was. Burnout. I had thrown myself into my work in order to avoid thinking about my mother's death, and as a result of throwing myself into my work, I was... I experienced burnout so badly that I absolutely dreaded the idea of doing any ministry work.
any ministry work whatsoever. I would literally have negative thoughts such as, I wish I had never started Cerebral Faith, or this is such drudgery, or I miss when Cerebral Faith was just a simple blogger blog I wrote every now and then. I've had, I've had tiny burnouts before, but never this badly. I would deal with these past minor burnouts by usually taking a week off and just playing through a video game or doing something else recreational, but I've never had to take a break that lasted half a year. That's not a break, that's a sabbatical. It wasn't all bad. I did have the ability to revisit an old childhood hobby that I never would have had the time for otherwise, writing fiction. In this case, I wrote two Digimon fiction series, which, were se which are sequels to one I wrote when I was 14 years old. The one I wrote when I was 14 is called Digimon Universe, and it was kind of a group forum RPG that was modified and converted into an FDD. And then 15 years later... When I had the burnout, I decided to write a couple of sequels to them. And let me tell you, in my own personal opinion, my storytelling abilities have skyrocketed since then. It's over at www.digimonuniversefdd.com if you'd like to check it out. And if you would like to see just if I'm just as good of a fiction writer as I am a nonfiction writer. But I digress. Anyway, you now know why I haven't done anything on this channel, or the podcast, or the blog, for the past six months. But rather than just make a video explaining why I was gone, and making an announcement that I'm back, I thought I'd do something that might help others avoid burning out. There are three major rules you ought to abide by. 1. Don't put more on your plate than you think you can handle. Although I burned myself out by working nonstop around the clock, I did legitimately have a lot on my plate. My main issue was that I tried to get a lot of these things done all at once. I would work on videos from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. I would read one of my books in between. If you'll take a, the time to look, you'll see that I produced approximately seven videos in one month. Uh, if you don't include the live-streamed videos. That's a lot of editing work in a very short amount of time. To give you a better idea of how hard I was working, the videos titled The Maximally Great Argument Against Calvinism, Is God a Narcissist for Demanding Worship? What Does Romans 9 Really Teach? Calvinists and the Fallacy of Illegitimate Totality Transfer, and respi Responding to Lawrence Stanley on Titus 2.11 were all uploaded on October 29th, November 3rd, November 5th, November 12th, and November 19th, respectively. And these don't include the live streams, which, although they weren't as taxing and didn't take as long to make, still required some effort. You see, coming up with new episodes of the podcast and or Cerebral Faith Live takes some work. If it's a presentation, I need to go into Canva and prepare my slides. If it's a debate that I want to moderate between two people, I need to email and or text them both and... So, you know, so we can all agree on a time when to get together to do the stream. Again, this isn't too taxing alone, but remember, that was placed on top of an already extreme workload I was already doing. Moreover, I was going into overdrive taking care of my father in between all this. I had to do more for him than I normally did because he had a herniated disc in his back that had to be surgically removed. It prevented him from walking. He would fall all the time. Um, his, his back hurt. His leg hurt. He, he just couldn't do anything. And so I had to do everything not only that I normally would do around the house, but even the things that he would normally do. So, and the, the problem was is that he, he a sur the surgeons couldn't even see him for an entire month. He, ha he got diagnosed with this in early November, and he couldn't, get a, he couldn't get the surgery done until, like, sometime after, thank sometimes, sometime after Thanksgiving. So the entire month of November, I did not only my part of the chores, but Dad's part as well. I did both our laundry, I did all the grocery shopping, I did all the cooking, I did all the cleaning, and we didn't even have a dishwasher 
So every dish had to be washed by hand, and I also had to do things for my special needs sister, who can't care for herself quite like an ordinary 26-year-old woman can. This alone was taxing. I felt like I was taking care of two small children who needed something from me every waking moment. It got to the point where I finally understood my mother when, when my sister and I were children, she would go somewhere in her car and be gone for a few hours or lock herself in the bathroom for the sole purpose of getting peace and quiet. On top of all of this, I was engaging in arguments in the comment section of the Cerebral Faith blog and uh, the comment sections of YouTube videos on the Cerebral Faith YouTube channel. Also, when people would ask me to come on to podcasts, I never said no. I'm usually not one to give a blanket no unless I can come up with some excuse, real or otherwise, because I just fear as coming off as rude if I just say, no, I don't want to do it because I just don't want to or I just don't feel like it. And we're still not done. I had this agreement with InterVarsity Press to write blog reviews and have the authors on the podcast if they would send me books free of charge. So I was trying to read some of those books in between all of the video editing and elderly father care and special needs sister care and so on and so forth. Here's what I should have done. I should have paced myself on the videos. It would have been better if I had put one of these videos out every month for the past six months. I think there's about six videos. Uh, I didn't count them, but there's quite a handful. It would have been better for me to have published one of those every month in 2022 rather than put them all out at once and just be give you absolutely no content for the past six months and be silent and maybe maybe you thought I was dead. It's not like I have deadlines to meet. It's not like I have a boss looking over my shoulder saying, go through this list of videos you plan to make by the end of November or you're fired. I could have taken my time. I should have taken my time. I had a long list of videos I wanted to make, but I didn't have to get them all made all, all at once. There was no rush. But again, I was throwing myself into my work in order to avoid uh, dealing with my mom's death. I, If I was working on a video, if I was working on a blog post or a podcast or anything, I wasn't thinking about her. And if I wasn't thinking about her, I wasn't sad. So evidently, I have discovered that this is the kind of person I am. I'm the kind of person who copes by working themselves to death. Not a very healthy way to cope. Maybe I'll do better the next time I lose someone. Anyway, additionally, I could have put the podcast on hold like I intended. I had already made plans, even when it was still summer, of making the Cerebral Faith podcast into a seasonal thing. And now the podcast is fused together with a live, a live-streamed web show called Cerebral Faith Live. I had planned on doing that because it's just, it's becoming increasingly difficult to come up with podcast topic episodes. I mean, it's kind of like being a topical preacher who makes sermons based on new topics every week, except it's worse because you can never revisit an old topic because you've already talked about it. So if I made a podcast episode doing like a one hour lecture on the Kalam cosmological argument, well, I already did that way back in the very beginning. I would have to find some way to revisit it, like maybe if Pologia made a video arguing against the Kalam and I decided to respond to that, but I could never just, like, talk about the Kalam in general again. It's even worse than being a topical preacher, because at least you can, like, give the same sermon maybe one or two years later. So it would just be better to do it, like over the summer, maybe produce 10 or 20 episodes rather than have it go all year long. I could have just put it on hold at the beginning of fall, and I should have. I should have stopped the streams, but I didn't stop them until January. Also, going forward, I don't plan on doing deals with publishers anymore. I have found that when I'm obligated to read something, for some strange reason, that makes me not want to do it. 
It's kind of like when you were a kid, and you intended to wash the dishes of your own free will, but then your mother asks you, right as you were on your way to the sink, to wash the dishes, and suddenly this sense of dread comes over you. I was going to do it anyway, but now I have to do it. I can't psychologically explain this, but that's what it is. InterVarsity has sent some books since then unsolicited, and I think I'm going to have to email them and just tell them to stop. Like, stop sending me books that I'm going to be obligated to read and review. I don't want to do this anymore. Eh. So, if you have a ministry where you are your own boss and you decide when you do X, Y, or Z, then you definitely need to regulate how much you do. 2. Remember why you do what you do. I felt like I had to produce content every so often. Yes, I'm a bit of a workaholic, and having idle hands make me very uncomfortable, but besides that, I felt like I was under pressure to make content. Why? Well, because I have a Patreon, and people pay to help me make content. If I go too long without making anything, it's like I'm getting paid to do nothing. My patrons pay me for early access to blog posts, early access to videos, early access to podcast episodes, shout-outs on the podcast and videos, etc. So in a way, it felt like I had a job to do. What was once a passion became a job. And whereas before, I could make things whenever I felt like it, now I feel like I had to churn content out in a timely manner. I am very grateful for my patrons, and I don't regret setting up a Patreon. I want to make it clear that Patreon wasn't the problem. I'm sure that if I had come forth sooner and had been transparent with my fatigue, that people would have understood. People would have understood. They would have given me the time I needed to recharge my batteries, um, and it would have been fine. In addition, I started to think of myself as a content creator rather than as a minister of the gospel. I was losing sight of why I wanted to do this in the first place. I started a blog, then a podcast, then a YouTube channel, not to be a content creator, a theological PewDiePie, if you will, but to convince unbelievers that Christianity is true and to equip believers with good answers they need when they share the gospel with a skeptical world. All my efforts have actually bore fruit. Not much, but some. I have persuaded three atheists to become Christians and at least one Calvinist to become an Arminian. I've had many Christians tell me that my content was helpful in wrestling with difficult questions they've had or in equipping them with answers they needed when witnessing to a skeptical family member. Going forward, I plan on saving the testimonials I receive and archiving them in a Google Doc. I didn't do this before because I thought that I might come off as a show-off if I showed messages of people telling me how cerebral faith has helped them. When I think back to the past, and when I think about the people I have helped, it is a major morale booster. When you argue with people until you're blue in the face and you, nothing you say can seem to persuade them out of their worldview, and no one seems to be responding, it can feel like you're spinning your wheels. It can feel like there's really no point in opening your mouth and defending the Kalam or the moral argument, because everything you say is going to turn into a 100-page thread, and the other guy is going to be as unconvinced as he was before he watched your video or read your article. But remembering the few who have responded... Remembering the few unbelievers who were persuaded to become believers, remembering the believers who became equipped to defend their faith, and remembering the strengthened faith of other believers, I am reminded that what I'm doing is not a waste of time. I am indeed advancing the kingdom. Apologetics ministry, or even evangelism in general, isn't a numbers game. Contrary to what Calvinists will tell you, every soul is precious to God. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says that God is not willing that any should perish, but for all to come to repentance. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. After all, John 3.16 does say, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And 1 John 2, 2 says, Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Every soul matters to God. Every person is someone Jesus bled out for on the cross. If I can turn even a tiny number of lost souls to Jesus, it was well worth the effort. I am a content creator in the sense that I create content, but I am a minister of the gospel first and foremost. 3. Pray for Perseverance This is a piece of advice I found in John Piper's article. Piper wrote, quote, Ask the Lord for perseverance. Ask Him to protect you from burnout. And that seems so simple, and yet I think a lot of pastors don't do it. I think I probably prayed Psalm 16.1 as much as anything. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. And what I meant was, don't let me quit. Don't let me get so discouraged I want to walk away. Don't let me not like this ministry. Restore the joy of the ministry to me every day. So pray that he would give you the persevering power that you need." End quote. Piper is right. Not words you hear me say often, am I right? Asking God for strength is such a simple thing, and for Christians, asking God for help with anything when we struggle should be something we do instinctually. Yet, I did not do that. I would not. I would pray that things would go well, I would pray that my equipment would not malfunction, or that I could word my answers in a podcast interview well, I would pray that I would get enough sleep the night before so I could feel energized the next day, but I didn't pray for God to give me mental strength. 4. Set aside a Sabbath. It was never God's intention for us to work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We were not built that way, and God knows we need downtime. As God said in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8-11, to 11, quote, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, end quote. Keeping a Sabbath isn't just a suggestion, it's a command. Now, Romans 14 tells us that which day of the week your Sabbath is on does not matter. As long as it is at least one day out of the seven, then you're doing fine. Do something fun. Watch a movie. Play a video game. Get caught up on that show you've been getting behind on. Go for a nature hike with a friend or your spouse. Read a novel. Just do something that's fun and not work-related. 5. Work smarter, not harder. If you've watched my past videos, you'll notice that visually it looks much different than the current one you're watching. The past videos have looked very, very different than the one you're currently watching, and, spoiler alert, ones you're going to be watching going forward. When my sabbatical was nearing its close, I've tried to think of ways to employ my philosophy of work, hard, work smarter, not harder, when I came back to doing ministry again. The video making area is no doubt the most demanding aspect of cerebral faith. Here's the solution I thought of. So, initially I wanted to mimic the style of Inspiring Philosophy and Faith Because of Reason, Michael Jones and David Palman's channels respectively, because I just loved how those videos look. They're gorgeous, visually speaking. And as a video platform, I've wanted, from the very beginning, the channel to have visuals, and not just be videos of me sitting in a chair talking the whole time. Although Cerebral Faith Live is an exception. Sort of. But even there... Either I or my guests have employed PowerPoint or Google Slides for 8 out of 10 of the streams. Uh, for example, my presentations and, and the debaters I've had on. But I've been watching a lot of YouTubers, and I think that maybe the best kind of style for me to employ for future uploads is the kind of style you'll see with YouTubers such as Dobbs, Ruffled Rowlet, Candy Evie. Now, all these YouTubers make Pokemon content, but I could do that kind of style just with Christian apologetics and theological content. 
this this style of video involves uh, an anime avatar who represents the content creator doing the talking some of the time, with different avatars appearing every now and then to express different emotions. Very happy, annoyed, disappointed, etc. But the avatars aren't on screen all the time. There's various different pictures, GIFs, or GIFs, depending on how you where you fall on that debate, of the pronunciation of GIFs, or even videos they employ throughout the video as well, stock videos or, you know, screen recordings of a television episode they're commenting on or something. Uh, the expressive avatars only appear periodically, usually at the beginning and end, but occasionally they show up in the middle as well. One of the reasons I never let myself be seen on camera in my uploads, except for maybe at the end during the like and subscribe section, uh, is because I don't have a prompter. I have a prompter app from the Mac store, but it doesn't work well. No matter how hard I try, it's still obvious that I'm reading from a script. This was criticism I received from the first few videos I uploaded back in the summer of 2020. So I have... I have to have something up on the screen at all times. However, the problem is that sometimes this can get tricky. I had one heck of a time with my video on the ontological argument for God's existence because, well, you're not exactly going to find many images or stock videos that go along with explanations of possible worlds, necessary and contingent existence, uh, maximal greatness, and, and so on and so forth. But if I had a little cartoon avatar of myself to show up on screen, that that would have saved me from the dichotomy of either having me on screen with my eyeballs visibly moving from left to right, or racking my brain over what kind of image or stock video to slap over the b-roll at that moment. My thinking was that this style of video would cut down the usual 15 to 16 hours for a the a, for a 20 minute video 20 minutes is like the average length of my videos um rather than having 15 to 16 hours of editing it would be four or five hours unfortunately i have no artistic talent and i'll have to commission someone to make this art for me i will hopefully have an additional source of income by the end of next week and that might be enough to commission a few pieces the average commission price I've seen on Etsy was around $20 to $30 per self-portrait, but since I'm going to need four or five of these, that's going to add up to a bit over $100. So in the meantime, if I don't have an image to put over the B-roll, just enjoy the repetitive nature of this background video I got from Pixivay. Well, that's it for this video. I'm glad to finally be back doing Christian Apologetics Ministry, and I promise I will respond to some of your comments that I have neglected for the sake of my mental health. Although, since a lot of those comments are critical of what I've said, they often grow into long debate threads. So I can't promise I'll respond to everyone every time, but I will read the comments at minimum, and I'll respond to what I can. After all, I wouldn't want to burn out again, right? But if you liked this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. There are some major changes occurring in my life, but my goal is to upload at least one or two videos per month, not including the live-streamed web show Cerebral Faith Live. And if you would, consider becoming a patron. Patreon has been such a blessing in helping me pay for things that help me make more of the content you guys en enjoy. I pay for the website host over at CerebralFaith.net. That costs about $29 a month. I've paid for the video editor I use with... With Patreon money, it's Wondershare Filmora, which is not sponsoring this video. I buy books for research with Patreon money, Canva, StreamYard Premium, and so much more. Making content is not cheap, and anything you can contribute would be much appreciated. Until next time, peace out, God bless, and keep using the brains that God gave you.